I was born in Dallas Went to private school Moved down to Austin Turned a band man Started breaking on the rules Ended up on Wall Street Welcome to the Social Musings by Austin podcast. I'm your host, Austin from Austin. This month, I have my first new original fiction story in six months. It's called Abducted in Amsterdam, a Nightmare Scenario, and it's inspired by actual events. Many of you know that I recently returned from a three-week trip to the Netherlands. I've actually written four articles about my European expedition thus far, which you can find in the Travel and Current Events section of the Social Musings by Austin website at www.socialmusingsbyaustin.com. You may have read about my visits to medieval castles, world-class museums, and off-the-beaten-path restaurants for truly local Dutch fare. Or perhaps you noticed my post on Memorial Day weekend about my visit to the Netherlands American Cemetery and Memorial, which is in the May episode of the Social Musings by Austin podcast. I love sharing experiences like this with you. It makes me feel good if I can transport you into these moments when I was so grateful to be alive. However, since I've been back, there is one story from the Netherlands that I haven't told yet. It is not inspiring, but rather deeply disturbing. I feel like I need to get it off my chest, though, so here it is. The Netherlands is the European country with which I am most familiar. Not only did I travel to Holland on my post-graduation trip after college and fall in love with the coffee shops in the red light district, but then a few years later, I ended up working in Amsterdam with clients when I was an investment banker living in London. Furthermore, I visit the Dutch territory of Aruba for every month or a month every year, and I've met numerous Dutch people on holiday on the beach who've been generous enough to invite me over to stay with them in their homeland. For those reasons, the Netherlands has always been my top destination in Europe, and I decided I would travel there for my first post-pandemic European vacation. Now, the purpose of my visit was to catch up with friends and to generate content for my Social Musings by Austin brand and I did happen to schedule a business meeting for the day that I arrived. When I landed at Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, I was totally jet lagged. I mean, there's nothing like a 10 hour overnight flight to a country seven time zones ahead of me here in Austin, Texas, to really mess with your sleep schedule. And as I walked out the immigration area into the main arrivals area of Schiphol Airport, I was in a daze. I was in only in Amsterdam for one night, which was Thursday, March 30th, before my friends were due to pick me up the following day. And I had planned to spend it alone after my important appointment concluded. After my meeting, perhaps I would visit an Indonesian restaurant I used to frequent. My father also had recommended a French place in De Pape called Arles. Maybe I would even walk through the red light district after dinner, just for old times sake, and ideally get a good night's rest. Well, my Uber pulled up to the hotel and I dragged my luggage and acoustic guitar inside. Thankfully, my room was available, owing to my Marriott Platinum status, and my room was large and modern. I quickly unpacked my bag, plugged in all my electronics to charge, and climbed into the queen-size bed to take a really solid nap. I thought if I fell asleep for a few hours, 
I would be fine for my meeting, which was at 4 p.m. that very day. As I put in my earplugs and donned my eye shades, which was the same getup I had used on my flight over to Amsterdam, I took a final look at my iPhone 12 Pro. It was 11.11 a.m. on Thursday, March 30th. 11.11, I thought. Make a wish. It was a cold and rainy day, but I was excited to finally be back in Europe after three years away due to the pandemic. And as I walked through Dom Square and then the Kalverstraat, I had butterflies in my stomach. I was actually here again. My meeting was at the Autoritate Financiera Martin, also known as the IFM. The IFM is the financial markets regulator in the Netherlands, and I knew several of its staff members from my days working with the Philips Pension Fund during the mid-2000s. The IFM is located on the Wieselgracht, which is a beautiful area of Amsterdam near the Heineken Brewery. I walked in and shook off my umbrella, and most Dutch people do not use umbrellas, by the way, so an umbrella is a surefire giveaway that you are a tourist. And I approached the security guard station, where a man and a woman sat in their Securitas-style uniforms and I explained the purpose of my visit. The security staff was incredibly cordial, and they directed me towards the left of the desk to wait in the lobby. I turned to the left and took in the situation. Unlike American lobbies, the IFM had a comfortable seating area with coffee, tea, and newspapers spread across a large, stylish wooden table that looked like it was from a European pottery barn. It was the living room I wish I had, replete with immaculately clean women's and men's restrooms. In fact, this setup was far superior to the cramped basic economy space in which I had just spent the last 12 hours. I breathed a sigh of relief and I sat down with a much needed coffee and began to read the Telegraaf one of the Netherlands' leading newspapers. I made a note of an article about upcoming pension reform in Holland, being sure to bring, bring it up in my meeting. My eyes also wandered to an article about an Eastern European crime gang operating in Amsterdam targeting tourists. Interesting. I was taken to the board meeting where I made a presentation on the U.S. retirement system. The Netherlands is currently in the midst of a major pension reform where every employee will be moved from their current defined benefit plan pension plan to a more 401k style retirement system, and I was here to share my expertise. The boardroom looked over the Wieselgracht and the Heineken Brewery, and towards the end I was having trouble concentrating on my remarks as the caffeine wore off. I may have even drifted off to sleep for a split second during the meeting, but I think my slumber went by unnoticed. After the meeting, I was invited for a drink by the staff. We grabbed our coats and walked out into the wet, windy weather. It was 5.30 p.m., and despite the weather, the streets were packed with workers getting off work. We crossed the street and peered into a restaurant, which was completely full. One of the AFM staff remarked that many Dutch workers do not have to work on Friday. Therefore, workers in Amsterdam do a lot of work happy hours with their colleagues on the Thursday before they start their weekend. I mean, Thursday isn't called Friday Junior for nothing, folks. After unsuccessfully trying to find a spot at several cafes, we finally were able to secure a table at Le Patron, a corner cafe located right on the busy Wieselgracht Plaza. Now the atmosphere inside Le Patron was boisterous and full of tourists, office types and suits, and typically Dutch pub drinkers. It was golden hour on a Thursday in Amsterdam. The waiter came to our table. 
He had a curious smile on his face when he learned that I was an American. My group ordered Bitterbala and some Duval beers, and as the waiter walked behind the bar, I saw him whisper something to the bartender. They looked at each other and smiled. Well, the drinks and the Bitterbala arrived, and everyone chanted Prost, which means cheers in Dutch. I took a sip of my drink. During lulls in the conversation, I looked out the floor-to-ceiling windows of the cafe and watched the trams, bicycles, cars, and pedestrians bustle back and forth. It felt like this entire afternoon was a dream. By the time I had finished half of my glass, things started just getting weird. I had my glasses on. But it was as if my vision was blurred. My head felt very cloudy. My stomach was turning and I was nauseous. Now I have been highly intoxicated before, especially in my college years, where I would ultimately experience the spins and eventually vomit. In fact, once during my early time on Wall Street, I was so sick from alcohol poisoning that I threw up inside a VCR machine. Yeah, you heard that right. I actually opened the flap where the videotapes go in and just let loose. <laughs> My roommate came out the next morning to go to work. It happened to be a Sunday and he was an investment banker like me, which meant we worked seven days a week and was like, WTF, man. My feeble reasoning was that I couldn't make it to the bathroom. So I guess I decided that the VCR machine looked like a reasonable receptacle. Yeah, we never watched another VCR again that year. However, this feeling was totally different. It was like I had not only consumed 10 beers, but also been poisoned. Well, I tried to maintain my composure by focusing on the conversation, which was now fading in and out. I told myself it was probably just the jet lag or the fact that I haven't had alcohol in a while and perhaps my tolerance was low. I even looked over at the wall and could not even read the words on the I'm still beer sign. Well, by this point, the cafe was standing room only. Through my clouded vision, I could kind of see people standing at the bar eyeing our table. My friends got up to leave and I said goodbye and looked for my waiter to pay my portion of the bill. When I flagged him down, he asked me if I was feeling all right. He told me that I looked unwell and that perhaps I needed to freshen up in the bathroom. And he pointed me in the direction of the toilet, which was down a winding hallway inside the bowels of the centuries old building. My consciousness was starting to fade in and out, and I was staggering against the side of each wall of the dark hallway. As I opened the door to the men's restroom, I saw three men in black ski masks. That was the last thing I remember. My head throbbed. I was blindfolded and my hands were tied. I was gagged and I could barely breathe through my nose. I was seated on a cold metal chair, which could not have been more uncomfortable. I could hear footsteps shuffling around the room. It sounded like water was dripping somewhere and it smelled dank. I overheard some muffled voices speaking in some sort of Eastern European dialect. I've never been so scared in my life. For what felt like an eternity, I sat in my own excrement and urine. I was still incredibly nauseous and felt that I needed to throw up. I tried to piece together what was happening. I 
must have been drugged at that cafe. It must have been that Eastern European mob that was mentioned in the paper. And those must have been operatives at Le Patron, especially that suspicious waiter. I had unknowingly walked right into a trap. Yeah, I was the perfect target. An unsuspecting American tourist traveling alone. Even better for them, no one, I mean no one, would miss me until 24 hours later when my friends were set to pick me up from my hotel and when I would be a no-show. I was just another lost soul who would maybe make the headlines as a dead American tourist. Well, I knew I had to do something. After a while, most of the footsteps left, and I heard one person settle into a seat as it screeched across the floor. I struggled in my chair, hoping to get my captor's attention. Footsteps approached. My blindfold was ripped off. I wish I could describe to you his face. His facial features all seemed elongated, and his ears stuck up and out from his head. Yet despite his upstanding ears, the rest of his features slouched down. His spiny shoulders seemed to stick out from his tattered, dirty shirt. He was scurrying around me, so I couldn't get a good look. His teeth were yellow and seemed to have points on them. His mouth was getting closer to me, and he was screeching in a high voice, We got you! We got you! We got you! I screamed as I shot upwards in my bed. I was soaked in my own sweat. I looked around. I was back at my hotel. I looked at my phone, and it was only then that I realized the kidnapping was all just a dream. In fact, I had just woken up from my nap after flying into Amsterdam, and it was 3 p.m. on Thursday afternoon. I was about to head to my 4 p.m. meeting at the AFM. The end. Now, I want everybody to know that this story is based on an actual nightmare I experienced when I was over in the Netherlands. When I woke up terrified and drenched in sweat, I decided to write a story about my dream. I also have heard numerous troubling stories recently about friends being drugged while out in downtown Austin. And I wanted to write this story to call attention to this emerging threat to our safety. So whether you're traveling over to Europe for an amazing trip this summer, or going out downtown in Austin, Texas, or wherever your hometown is, please be careful out there. If you enjoyed this original story, please check out my other original stories, such as Tragedy in Paradise, or Dating Apps Can Be Deadly, available on this Apple podcast, uh, and in the original stories and songs section of the Social Musings by Austin website. I'm really enjoying my encore career as a writer, musician, and podcaster, and I was honored to be interviewed recently by my alma mater, the University of Texas at Austin, for their McCombs Business School alumni publication. In the interview, I discuss my career, my time at UT, and my advice for recent graduates. You can find the link to the article either on LinkedIn, the McCombs alumni webpage, or on the Social Musings by Austin website. Let me know what you think of this latest story, and I'm excited to bring you more new, fresh, original content in the months to come. Many of you know that in Aruba last November, I wrote a story about people uh, being swept out to sea, a true story. 
and my Tragedy in Paradise article got uh, many, many reads and, and a lot of publicity. And I wrote a song called I'm Lost that went along with the story. The song is about people being swept out to sea and waiting to be rescued. And in a lot of ways, I think that my fictional character in the story that I just told is thinking very similar thoughts, facing death with honor and integrity and hoping for a miracle. So recorded here in my home studio, here's my original song, I'm Lost. Enjoy it, and until next time, be safe out there. Surrounds me as far as the eye can see. Days and nights are long, but I'm trying to be strong where the wind blows. I go. Am I gonna cry? Am I gonna die? Am I gonna say?